are these people? Uh, you can't vote, Colin. Do you know that? You know you can't vote? You're not allowed. I'm going to tell you right now, you're not allowed to vote. What do you, um, well, what do you mean by that? Oh, actually, what does Caitlin mean by that? Uh, well, I'm going to get to it. Um, but this is an article from Caitlin uh, about how you should know how unfree you actually are. And we on this channel have had the none of the above stance for a while now. And yeah, and we got into fights with certain a few members about over the week. Well, Indy and I. And so, I think I think you'll understand why we feel that way after reading this. So mm -hmm. that's why I wanted to bring it. But she writes, if Americans were actually in charge, there would be some option available to them to end the Israeli genocide in Gaza. But when yep. it comes to matters of such importance, they never get a vote. Right. So she writes that Biden administration has reportedly approved an Israeli assault on Rafa, the last slightly safe city in the Gaza Strip, and is openly preparing to work with Congress to punish the IC ICJ for seeking arrest warrants of Israeli officials for war crimes. President Joe Biden is a monster who belongs in a cell at the Hague. Letting them off easy, Caitlin. Um, <laughs> I talk about Biden's criminality a lot, but I should probably clarify that I don't do so because I believe Trump or even RFK would be acting with any more kindness towards the people of Gaza if they were president. No, um, I mean, again, it's the system. Yep. They all belong, all three of them belong to the system. And mm -hmm. that in of itself is the problem. And I think. I'm sure Ken is going to go into that, but that's the issue with yep. even these alternate parties. They have to do the dance within the system. It's not mm. like they're going to go into it and change it. Like, and people, and people, and I don't want to pop the bubble. Um, thank you, Anna, for the $10 of either way on um, Catch Up. Yep. Thank you, Indy, for sharing that um but this is why we have our team down the above stance it's the idea that people are still believing that for alternate party and look i'm saying this as a registered green in dc i'm like i'm supposed to vote at next week but like you're asking people to vote for a party that has to play by the rules within the duopoly. And, and this is something that I've been screaming about like for months, if not since we've been doing this show, as, as, as I've become more, you know, politically involved, I would say. Like, what is, and also we'll use Jill Stein as an example. What does she plan to do to beat the establishment that will obviously fight her to for nail um, to essentially dissolve the system that we're in that would make voting a viable option in the future. Like, what's her plan? Like, this is the most election of our lifetime. Right. So we're not going to vote. Just voting for her is not going to solve matters. And no. well, voting in the hope how does, that she's how going does, to do something. Colin, during our intro, we play Kwame Ture every every time. What does he say? That voting on one day never meant anything? Right. Like right. so but anyway, just to continue. So Caitlin continues all three of the arguably viable US presidential candidates are virulent Zionists who have all made it clear they would back Israel's genocidal atrocities with adamant fervor. A lot of fuss gets made over the West brand of democracy. Wars of aggression have been waged under the <coughs> banner of spreading it throughout the world and allowing the people to control what their governments will do. But what you very seldom see discussed in mainstream discourse is the fact that there are a great many issues that this form of so-called democracy never allows the people to vote on. The genocide in Gaza are arguably the single most urgent matter in the world right now, partly for how horrific it is in of itself and partly for its potential to explode into wars, 
could bring far greater devastation to the region. But nobody's allowed to vote on whether this will continue or not, even in the heart of the U.S. empire, which is making it all possible. The only candidates who stand any chance of getting elected are all committed to making sure this mass atrocity continues. Because if you ever want to get anywhere near the presidency, you have to make a whole lot of deals with powerful forces who are never elected by anybody. And this just means so much about the nature of this democracy, says so much, a word which literally means rule by the people. If the people were actually in charge, there would be some option available to them to end the worst thing happening in the world right now. If the people are not in charge, when it comes to matters of the most importance, never get a vote. Americans don't get a vote on whether or not vast fortunes should be poured into funding a war machine which stretches around the globe. The option is never on the ballot. You don't get to vote on whether or not the drastic action needed to prevent environmental collapse should be taken. You don't get to vote on whether or not the U.S. empire should be escalating against nuclear-armed nations such as Russia and China with ever-increasing aggression. You don't get to vote on whether the wealthy should be getting richer and richer while the poor have to struggle harder and harder to survive. You don't get to vote on whether the wealthy should be allowed to use their wealth to influence political affairs in ways that gives them more and more wealth and power. They don't get to vote and whether they should have their minds pummeled with empire propaganda 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, by rich and powerful people who are invested in manipulating the way they think, act, vote, shop, and work. They don't get to vote on whether their police force should be getting more and more militarized, or whether the surveillance practices of the U.S. intelligence cartel should be getting more and more intrusive. They don't get to vote on whether the U.S. should have the highest incarceration rate in the world and the profoundly unjust legal system which gives rise to it. They don't get to vote on whether the Internet should be getting more and more consolidated and censorship he heavy as Silicon Valley mega corporations move into more and more collaborative relationships with the U.S. government. They don't get to vote on whether there should be billionaires when there are people living on the streets. They don't get to vote on whether their government should be encircling the planet with hundreds of military bases and working to destroy any nation that disobeys it while their own people struggle and suffer at home. I would also argue you can't vote out the WEF and the, like, people who control all the wealth and power. You don't just get to get rid of those with a vote. So if you want to vote on something the powerful don't care about, the possibility that your vote might have some sway. You might have some tiny degree of influence over women's reproductive rights, for example, or whether or not gay people can get married. But when it comes to the mechanisms of the imperial machine like war, militarism, propaganda, oligarchy, capitalism, or authoritarianism, hand will get smacked away the instant you move to touch them. So it's not really democracy then, is it? Not really ruled by the people if all the most important and consequential decisions are made by forces with no accountability electorate while the people are confined to a toddler's playpen in the corner arguing about pronouns and fat phobia. And what really right. sucks is that so many people believe this is freedom and democracy. People will never know freedom until they first understand how profoundly unfree they really are. Thoughts, Colin? Yeah. I mean, go back to that last slide. Yes, sir. Like, that first paragraph, when it comes to the mechanics of the imperial rule regime, like more militarism, propaganda, all for attendance, your hand will get smacked away the instant you move or touch them. This is what people in alternate parties want to have happen. Yeah. Like, they want those people to essentially get rid of those things. Yeah. And we know that those things are very much embedded in our government. So again, I ask, what is the plan uh -huh. to remove these systems that they will defend tooth and nail? Like, these are the questions that I ask people in alternate parties, and people do not have an answer for me. It's just like, they obfuscate they call me everything but a child of god and it's just like no it's like again i'm a registered green like i want change i want my vote to count for something but i also know the reality of and i to you and indy all the time we talk about this like yeah. 
you know, we're not voting our way out of this. So yeah, you can vote third party if you want to. You you want to, but the reality is Jill is not going to become president. What Jill is fighting for is 5%, really. Which, okay, pause. If she gets that 5% to get federal funding, which I'm not sure is a guarantee, how much? I've yet to hear anyone tell me that. How much are you going to get? Then, with that amount of money, how are you going to compete with the Democratic and Republican Party and their capability of funding their own campaign? Right. Does that then open you up to corporate PAC money to compete? <laughs> Are you willing to do that? Have you said you won't do that? Haven't heard either one. Well, like what Colin is talking about is that there's been no realistic plan to actually defeat the machine here. Right. We need right. change now, not fucking years from now. But you like, know what? But you know what, though? I wouldn't mind the fight for the future because sure. I won't mind that, but what's the plan behind that? How are you going to build that movement around that idea? So, but it just seems like the only thing that people are kind of pushing right now is vote and hope for the best. Yeah. And quite frankly, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of the idea of spending of almost wasting my time to vote in the hope that these politicians will do something for me. Like, I'm tired of it. So, you know, I will definitely vote for ballot initiatives in D.C. because those are important and those actually do amount to something here. But as far as the, well, my primary is next week. Really, who cares? Because, you know, Biden and Trump are basically right now the nominees. So, um, so in a way, it's kind of pointless when I don't like either of them. And Jill Stein is not on my ballot. So, you know, so I can't even vote for her even if I want to right now in the primary. And yeah, I think not, that's I, I don't there even, is no primary. I, but, right. It, it, well, for, at this point, it's almost pointless. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I because, mean, they're nominating Jill, and that's what they're going with. There isn't right. Any it's competitors just more for anymore. it's just more for the feels at yeah. this point. It's just more for feels and the vibe. Might be able so. to vote for her in the general, I imagine. Um, but yeah, I, like I'm I'm tired of the voter shaming from any and all parties, like come up with a practical plan and we might think about it. Right. You know, like, but until then, I'd rather, miss me with that shit. Right. I would rather have the conversation of, okay, starting in 2025, what, what, how are people going to organize around these ideas? Who, what needs to happen? How can we build upon the issues that we're seeing right now to make our voices count moving forward? That's what mm. I want to see. If people talk about that in a more practical way, I'll be all about that. But it's just right now, oh, just vote. And then after that, just go quiet until 2026 and then 2028 for the yeah. next election. I mean, like, if you've been paying attention like. to the convo couch for years, like we have, you know, things about citizens United Patriot, like all that crap of that. Your election is rigged. Still, you are not capable of having a fair election. It is just not possible. Look, look. I'm oh. saying I'm saying all of this. I don't want to tell people I, I'm gonna sound like Jordan Charlton, but I don't want to tell people what they should and shouldn't do. I do. What, don't fucking do uh, it. Well, no, here's like... the thing. Right. If you believe in look, I'm of the stance of yes, look into independent parties. Absolutely. You know, but also realize 
if you're going for independent parties, know that there's work that needs to be done within those parties. So, and some my... of y'all, some of y'all forgot what normal lie to your face, smile and wave, tell you what you want to hear. Politicians act and sound like, and it shows. Like they're they're right in front of you, lying to your face, and you just go, "Oh well, they there's they nice things. They're saying nice things." They're, they're saying nice things, and like their we, platform is so uh, based, is right. so nice. We looked at we looked at Jill Stein. We over the weekend we looked at Jill Stein's um policies. We looked at we looked at reparations, among other things. And yeah. someone said this: um, a policy is good if it answers every single one of your questions. And basically, coming off of that, like, after reading through what she said, I had a, a lot ton of more questions. questions than answers. I have right. a lot more questions. Then on the other um, side, you got the libertarians who elected someone who wants to continue the war in Ukraine, probably Zionist, like, definitely not the libertarian I would think they would actually want. So, one who's like... Well, I mean, what supports tra the trans agenda. All the libertarians would be upset at that, too. Like, Indy has an article that we will be reading Sunday about how these third parties are being infiltrated, and they have no plan to deal with that. So, no. uh, you know. No. And, that's, and that in of itself is a problem. A lot of people that are on these alternative parties now are basically people who were may have been involved with Bernie in 2016 or even 2020 that kind of moved on, but they still have a lot of that liberal, fake, progressive think, group think in terms of all we need to do is talk about have the right policies, just be on the right side of policies and just have people vote for that vote for that person who is best representative of that and call it a day. That's kind of what I'm seeing. And given that I do a lot of work on the ground, like right now we need people, we need to activate people's minds to kind of have them understand that this is an all out war yeah. against the establishment. And we need to start thinking in terms of if we want to destroy the establishment, and I'm sure YouTube is going to cut this, mm -hmm. but I don't care. Um, if we want to destroy the establishment, what does that look like? What will that entail? What do yeah. we need to do locally to kind of get the message that the shit that uh, politicians are doing in our name, um, in the guise of democracy, isn't flying with us? Like, and, but more importantly, how can we build upon these movements, even if they're a third party, to make them more viable in the future. And because, you know, even here in DC, and I said this to you over the weekend, like someone was yelling at me in terms of, oh, you need to look at the green candidates in DC. Right now in DC, there's posters of every person, like again, my primaries next week, of every person who is on the ballot. Yeah. I have not seen any green candidate at all. And I am more connected with the political world in DC than the average person. So if I don't even know who these people are, and if I don't know what they stand for, again, these are greens. Like, I'm not going to take the time to figure out who they are. You know? I should already know what they're about. And so far, I haven't heard Dick as far as actually not entirely true. I met one of the first people who is right for Congress one time at the Aaron Bushnell memorial that I went to back in February. And honestly, what I heard from him, I wasn't that impressed with him. It was just kind of like, okay, you're green. Okay, I don't care. You know, it didn't interest me. He did not excite me. He didn't. He just seemed like he was just going through the motions of campaigning. And uh, he hasn't campaigned, as far as I know. So, 
But that's what I'm talking about. It's we're asking people to vote, but you're asking people to vote within the very system that is trapping us. And you're asking people and third parties to do something for you. You're basically asking them to change the system just with the person versus actually finding the system to which they will need to fight against if they really want that change. And so, I don't know. But yeah, I feel you. It's just, it's just really frustrating, and it's just kind of sad that even within our space that there are people who are kind of pushing well, think, people to that. I think the issue and, for me is, has always been you're, you're trying to win a game that they have all the rules rigged. and power in. Like, you know, you are going to have to not play by the rules here. You know? So, right. right. Like, you assume, you, people assume that if we vote the right way and the right person, that things will be they, okay. They're just not and looking no, at I, things practically in that regard either, which, like, I feel right. you, and I hate being so, that guy, but at the so, same time, someone's got to tell you. So, like, all we're going to say to you guys, because it's a free country, you're entitled to do whatever you want, if you want to support third parties, and especially if you vote for them, go for it. You know, like, if you feel that compelled, do it. Because that may be better than the duopoly. But the bigger question that you should be asking is, that what is the movement going to be like after this election to make these parties more viable and actually move to something where the duopoly can be dismantled? Like, those are the questions that you should be asking and pushing for now, honestly. Honestly, that should have been happening yesterday. But, um, but yeah, your votes really don't matter. It's just really lip service to give the illusion that we have a democracy. We don't have a democracy in this country. Because yeah. if we did, we would have universal health care. We wouldn't have homelessness. Like, these are popular issues that, regardless of your party, people want. And the fact that the duopoly is working actively to not give them to you, or at minimum to give you an itty-bitty bit and not the fullness of what they can give you, should say something to you. So, anyway, that's our soapbox on that. But, yep. Um... um as we said, do what you want, but at our stance at INN, we're a team down the above. I like, think what we one of want... our chat members, Michael Johnson, said it best to close us out. No matter how authentic the candidate, the electoral process is inauthentic. Exactly. Yeah. Like, so... Yeah. You can have people that you like. You can have politicians that you like, but they're working within... A shit system. They're working with you can ha yeah like so we have to get rid of the system in order to get the things that we want and so we need to figure out what we need to do on the ground and among each other to try and count uh, to kind of counter that and if people are not necessarily talking about a plan and a strategy starting in January. That probably is not a party that you should be fucking with. To, that's my personal opinion. Yeah. Because they're just looking for the votes. They're not looking to really promote that change for you. Well, talking about tearing down the system is why we're demonetized. You can go to kodashv.com slash Indie News Network and try to help get around that system and help us out. You know, scan the QR code on your screen or put exclamation mark donate in chat. In chat that way it's always appreciated um you know if you can't give that way liking subbing subscribing hitting the share button leaving comments all that stuff allegedly help you know push us up in the algorithm so appreciate uh appreciate you if you're doing that help us get to 2k we're we're, we're getting there i think we're we're super close so less than 50 people need to <coughs> need to sign up for that so hit that subscribe button but Otherwise, thanks for watching.